Hi everybody, welcome back to Cylinder Lab. Today we're going to be installing CentOS 7 and PostgreSQL 9.4. There will not be any ads in this video. A quick word about pronunciation. It is pronounced PostgreSQL or Postgres for short. You only need to say it about 20-30 times before it really rolls off your tongue. So in this video we're going to be doing a little bit of planning. We're going to create our VM, install the operating system, do some prep work for the database, and then actually install the database. Here we are at the Postgres website with their itty bitty font, um, the world's most advanced open source database. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. To find the documentation for the version we're going to be installing, click documentation and 9.4. Everything seems to be in this one document. which is quite amazing when you're used to dealing with Oracle and their one billion documents. If you're looking for the CentOS 7 documentation, you may come here, go to documentation, go to manuals, and you see that there is no CentOS 6 or 7. Um, that's because you need to go to the upstream vendor, that being Red Hat. So I've got a tab open here. And here is the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 installation guide. And there is fantastic information here. This video is free of advertisements. If you enjoyed what you watched, please click subscribe, the like button, or leave a comment. Why? To improve my rank. You see, YouTube uses all kinds of factors to determine where my video ends up in the search results. Thank you. Okay, here's the plan. We're going to now create a virtual machine. Create a new virtual machine. We're going to choose typical configuration. We're going to name our VM CentOS 7 Postgres. Store it on data store one, Linux operating system, CentOS 7 64 bit, one NIC, ten gigabyte virtual disk, and finish. Time to plan our operating system install. Here are some questions we're going to answer. We're going to be naming our host CentOS 7 Postgres. For partitioning scheme, we're going to be doing manual using standard partitions with this layout. And here's our networking information. Let's go download our ISO. Go to centos.org and click Get CentOS Now. And now we're at the Download CentOS page. And you can choose to download DVD ISO, Everything ISO, or Minimal ISO. If you're wondering what on earth, which do I pick, never a bad idea to check the release notes. And it's actually explained here under Install Media. There's an explanation here, and it says, if you are unsure which image to use, pick the DVD image. Okay. 
After downloading your ISO, it's always a great idea to check your checksum. So I'm going to copy this. I found a great little utility called QuickHash for doing what we're wanting to do here. So I'm copying or pasting the hash here. This is what we're expecting. I'm going to select my file and it begins. Now we wait. And there you go. There are the results. We have a match. We're good to go. Let's install the operating system now. Click Edit Virtual Machine Settings. Then click CD DVD. Select your ISO. Click OK. Click Connect at Power On. And click OK. Now click Power On Virtual Machine. And go to console. When you click console, you should see this screen here. Select Install CentOS 7. And this is the Anaconda installer. We want English, continue. And now we're looking at the screen. We're going to start by changing our time zone. I'm going to change my time zone to Halifax. And done. My keyboard is good. My language support is fine. This is fine. Click this. Click done. And I'm going to select I will configure partitioning. And done. OK, let's start partitioning. Start with boot. And then swap. And we'll click done. Summary of changes. Click Accept Changes. We're going to specify our host name and domain. Click on. Click Configure. On the General tab, check this off. Choose Manual. Click Add. Here's how I filled out the screen here. Click Save. And click Done. Click Begin Installation. Click Root Password. Click Done. User Creation. Make Administrator. And click Done.
completed, now we can reboot. After your operating system is installed, you should make sure that your system can resolve the simple host name and also the fully qualified domain name to the static IP address that you chose during the installation. You can ask your network admin to enter it into their DNS or you can simply enter it into the local host file. After that's done, do all the pings that you see on the screen and make sure everything works correctly. Don't go forward until it all works. Once that's done, I would go ahead and verify that SSHD is running with the command that you see on the screen. I would do yum update and any yum installs that you want to do. I did this but didn't record it. Now's a great time to get to know your system. There's a ton of commands that you can do to snoop and dig around and just get to know the ins and outs of what's going on under the hood.